Hey, it's BitBurner, and I'm going to show you guys how to run your own Minecraft server right from your own computer. So um, this way you can play with uh, maybe some people that are um, at your house on another computer. That's one thing. Maybe they come over with a laptop and they connect to your Wi-Fi wi network or something like that. The other is um, actually other friends on um, on the internet. Now this probably, depending on your internet connection and your computer, it may be real laggy or it may not be. So, hey, it's worth a try. So let me show you how to do that. Okay. So first thing we do is on Minecraft.net, we're going to need to get the server. So Minecraft.net, we go to where it says Play Minecraft, then we hit Download. And on this page, there's actually... A, there's Minecraft for Windows right there, but we're not after that. We're after multiplayer server. So you can see here's the Minecraft server.exe right here. If you are running, um, uh, if this is going for OS 10 for Macintosh, this is what you want. Um, this this tutorial will mainly be for PC. The, the, you can actually glean some things from this, though. The only difference is you run the jar straight away where with um, this Minecraft server.exe it creates and downloads the jar and runs the jar, kind of like the launcher does for, um, um, for your actual client. All right, so I have my server, and so I'm going to grab that server and put it on my desktop. So I'll give it, get it downloaded here. And it has this one byte because I have... I had already downloaded it, so I'm going to take that off. Okay, so it should look like this. And if you just ran this right now, pile a bunch of files onto your desktop. You don't want that. So we're going to make a folder for this, a new folder. And that way, everything that goes to this server goes in this folder. So I'm going to call this my Minecraft server. And this could be right out here on your desktop. It doesn't matter. You can put it wherever you want to, actually. If you wanted to put it on another drive and or whatever you want. So now I've got a folder with my Minecraft server in there. So I'm going to just go ahead and run that. And what that's going to do is run the server and create all the files that go to the server. Here comes the server. comes up. This is where it would show right here where players would connect. And this is the log and chat area and this is where I can do chat and commands this is my stats right here right now I just basically generated a world and everything wow look at here all the stuff we need so uh, alright I'm gonna stop this close it here may take a second to stop oh, I may have to actually end it from oh no it did. just took a second to stop alright so here's basically what makes up the server. I have my band IP list, band players, the ops. This is where I would go in immediately and add my name in there as one of the ops. That way I have control and can build near spawn and that sort of thing. Any of your friends that you want the ability to build near spawn, they also need to be ops if you want them to have complete control over your server. Uh, most of your friends you might trust them that way, maybe not. So be careful with that one. Server log. This is all the chat and everything that happens. This file can grow pretty large. Um, so you might want to back it up from time to time if you, um, you and your friends talk a lot or that sort of thing. Server properties and whitelist. Whitelist, if you use one, and you should, should have everybody who can have access to your server. So um, if I wanted Junibug and Tiniest Bit, have access, I should add them to the whitelist. So now I have them in the whitelist, and if I make this internet facing, which I'm planning to do, um, I want to make sure that um, those are the only people that can get in. So here's the server properties file. If um, if this doesn't open in Notepad like it did mine, notice it's already the dot properties is not mapped to Notepad. You can right click on it and say open with, and choose a default program and actually choose notepad as the default program for that and that'll make sure that it dot properties files always open in notepad and then you can edit it anytime you want to just by double clicking so this is really crucial all the stuff we want allow nether true level name or world the world that's the name of the folder that the world is in 
enable query false, allow flight false. The server port, this will be important later. We'll remember about the ser server port when I talk, start talking about the networking portion. Level type default. Um, enable archon true or false. This would be control fr from another source. We're not going to actually do that. Um, level uh, uh, level C, this if you wanted to generate a new map, um, you would d take this world folder out, put a seed in here, then run the server, and it would use that seed to generate the world, and so you can look up seeds online. It's pretty neat. Server IP, now this is kind of an important part. The server IP is the IP address of the computer that this is running on. Okay, so this is the local IP address that this computer is running on. You can find out your local IP address by getting a command prompt. You can do this by going into your start menu and going into your accessories and you can see command prompt is one of the little programs in there. And you can type in IP config and this will get your IP configuration. You might have a bunch of stuff like I do from maybe you've had virtual machine stuff installed or something. But you see here, I've got one right here that is 192.168.0.197. That's the address of this machine that I'm running right now. This could be, um, you know, a PC that I have that left over from, you know, an old PC. Or this could be um, a PC that I've, um, I'm using right now that's just kind of a, you know, good PC. I can play Minecraft on it and run the server at the same time. I just need to um, remember this address and type it into here. So the server IP address is 192.168.0.197. This is important because this is the internal address that it, the server answers to. And so when, um, when things are routed to it, when we talk about a router and people coming from the outside world, it will need to know the internal um, uh, IP address. So here's something important too. This IP address may change on you from time to time. So you might want to check it if something's not working correctly. Um, you can also set this statically. I'm not going to go into statically setting your IP address, but you can also do that. You can look those sorts of things up on the internet pretty easily. All right, the other ones are pretty um, self-explanatory, like spawn, non-playing characters, like mobs and stuff. Yes, um, uh, Use a whitelist, true. Spawn animals, true. Online mode, true. PVP mode, false on this one. Difficulty game mode, uh, 20 max players. I'm going to go for just 10 max players. I, don't, I mean, I'm just running this on my own computer. Spawn monsters, generate structure. So you can see all the different um, uh, settings here. And this is the a message of the day. So this is what happens when you... Um, when you first spawn in, it says um, this message. So my Minecraft server. Let's, let's get it right like that. All right. So I'm going to save this. Now that I've kind of protected the server, I'm going to try it out. So I'm going to run my server. And there it's. I'm going to wait for this to prepare the map. Okay, it's ready. And so now I'm going to connect to it. It was 192.168.0.197. All right, I've logged in. You can see I'm logging in. It's going to take a second to generate the world here. Really laggy usually at first, so give it a second because it's just let, you know generating the world. I'm trying to swim up here. And now the lag's stopping and I can actually move around. And I'm really deep underwater. Wow. Whoa. I am like just this weird islands here. So alright, so the server's going. Let me at least get to dry land so I don't so I don't die. Oh, it's snow biome also. All right, so the server's working. So now the kids could actually get in because I have them on the whitelist. All that I, for at my house, the only number that I need to get of them is this one that I use the IP config command to get on a command prompt. So this is my local IP address. 
Well, now let's talk about adding in people from the outside world. So now we're talking about your gateway and your router. Your default gateway is right here in the IP config. This is typically your router's IP address. Now, kids, don't go editing your router if you don't know what you're doing. Ask your parents' permission, and it's probably password protected anyway. So what we're going to do is something called port forwarding. The reason we do this is because um, think of it as like mail that, ha that comes to a hotel. You know, a hotel is a public place. It's out on the public street. It has a, has a doorway to the public street. And the doorway to the public street has a very specific address. Okay? So think of that as your actual Internet address. So that's your Internet address. That's your address to the world. That's where every, all your mail comes. It is actually addressed to this very specific address. Now, internally, inside the hotel... We have many rooms inside this hotel. We have tons of rooms. We have all these rooms, and they all have numbers, okay, right? Well, in my case, we only have about four or five computers here, maybe maybe more. Um, but so think of those as each of the rooms. Each one of those rooms has a number. So once it comes in, we have our local numbers, which is the 192.168.0.197. Uh, Junibug might be 198. Tiniest bit might be 199. So... Once that comes in, it needs to know, well, now that I'm in, where does this package get delivered? Which computer, which local address is running this server, and how do I connect the person that is trying to come into this um, network with a lot of different um, computers? So think of it as, a, as mail coming into the hotel room. It has a, a main address, but then it also has another address, which is would be the room number. Now, that's going to be our port number, and that is why we call it port forwarding. We are forwarding the port from the external internet into our network into a certain address. So, I'm going to bring up my, my router here, and the way I get to it is in my web browser, I'm going to go 192.168.0.1. I'm not going to show you this because... I don't want to give away my passwords and that sort of thing. But there's usually an advanced setting in your um, in your router that you can set up. Um, sometimes they call it virtual server, like in this case, but it's considered port forwarding. Now watch out, not port triggering, but port forwarding or virtual server. So in this case, I would say enable. I'll call it Minecraft. And remember which IP address it was, 192.168.0.197. That's the internal IP address that I want to be routed to. The internal, think about like the hotel, if this was my room, I'd want the mail to come to this room. So that's what I'm putting on, on there. Now, remember before when I said Minecraft uses a very specific port, the 25565. It was in that config file. This is the port that we need to forward. So you see a public port and a private port. The port it answers to on the outside world and the port it answers to on the inside world. We're going to make those the same so we don't make it any more confusing. All right. All right. So what we're saying to our router now is that any signals that come on to this, uh, to this port will be routed to this computer, which is my computer that's running this server on this port. So yay, people will be able to connect. So I want to add this, and I'm not going to add it because I don't really want people to connect to me right now, but I would add this, and it, that would be enabled. Now my router has actually a schedule. I can schedule times, or I can come in here and disable it. Um, but simply not running the server, would not be able, people would not be able to get into the server. So as soon as you stop running the server, even with this port forwarding enabled, they would not be able to get into your computer or into uh, this, your server or anything. All right. So, uh, so imagine that we, will, we enabled this. Now our friends could get into our computer. But now we don't need this local address because that does your friends on the Internet no good. That only does your local um, people like Juniebug and Tiniest Bit, my kids, who want to get on there as a family server. Now, my friends, I have to give them my external IP address. Now, there's a few different ways to find this out. 
there's a, 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 a actual web address, address called findmyip.com. There it is. So this is my external IP address that is um, uh, basically, like I said, the hotel's public address out on the street. The one your friend will type in to get into uh, your Minecraft server. So this is what they would type into my Minecraft. Now, watch out. This is typically kind of like your other one. It, it changes. So you're going to need to check on this from time to time. Now, a lot of people don't like having to check on it all the time and tell their friends the newest number. So you can actually use a service like DYNDNS. DYNDNS will um, forward um, information. I don't know if it's free anymore. Let's see. I know no IP. There's a few different services that do these. You can get um, subdomains like myserver.noip.com. So um, check into these services. What they what they you do? You run a piece of software on your computer, and it it reports this public IP address uh, that you can look up all the time and maps it to a name like myserver.noip.com uh, or myserver.dyndns.com. They actually own some other ones like my uh, myserver. You could actually have, I'm saying my server, but that's the part that you could have as anything you want to. So uh, it's a great service. There's a free service, and then there's actually one so you can pay. You can actually get your own domain name and map it to it. So maybe you have a you know really good bandwidth at your house and a really good extra computer. And you can actually run you know pretty decent Minecraft server from your own house. The key here is a lot of RAM if you really want more people to connect. So that's how you solve that problem. So now. You just give that IP address to your friends, and they'll be able to connect to you in Minecraft, and you guys will be able to play. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, guys, and that you're able to play Minecraft together. And, uh, hey, have a good one. See you later.